FAA, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman, and thank you, uh, Secretary Buttigieg, for taking the time to come over um, and uh, testify and share the work you're doing with us today. I know that uh, to date, we've seen $2.3 billion in bipartisan infrastructure law funding uh, being announced, and uh, you know that that money's headed to Kansas with more than 228 specific projects I've identified for funding. Uh, that includes uh, more than 10 million dollars to help the Kansas City Area Transportation Authority uh, transition to electric buses uh, that are going to lead to cleaner, healthier transportation for the entire Kansas City metro area. I know you've seen some of that in person. Uh, and, you know, since the law passed, $1.4 billion has been allocated uh, for transportation in Kansas for roads, bridges, public transit, ports, airports, and, um, and then another $194 million has been announced for clean water. Our state, uh, the state of Kansas, has received $451.7 million to connect everyone in the state, including rural parts of uh, the Kansas 3rd to reliable high-speed internet. And that's more than 118,000 uh, Kansas households that are already saving uh, because of their uh, internet, internet bill being lowered thanks to the bipartisan infrastructure bill. Um, I mean, these are real savings for Kansas families and uh, particularly for folks who are working hard to manage their budgets. Uh, there is also a, a whole new world of we have saw this because of the pandemic of our hospitals and healthcare leaning into things like telemedicine. Um, and, and our entrepreneurs are, uh, you know, trying to get their, their businesses up and going. But I do think when we look back, uh, when, when history is written about this time, uh, and we examine the long-term impact of the bipartisan infrastructure law, it's going to be judged on some of these uh, significant federal investments, particularly when it comes to transportation and infrastructure. And I'm not just saying that because I'm an infrastructure nerd. Um, I'm saying it because we know that it's not just dollars and cents we're talking about. Uh, so I first, of course, want to say thank you for, uh, we've heard about a number of different projects, grants, um, and particularly for those in Kansas uh, that are that are getting into communities from Os Osawatomie to Overland Park. Um, I'm hoping to hear a little bit about how you're viewing that disbursement process because I think we know that the uh, bread and butter of this stuff is going to be in the implementation. And um, so I'm, I'm hoping to glean a bit about how that's going from you. Uh, thanks for the question. It is uh, at the heart of what we think about every day. We're trying to build good things well and promptly while meeting all of the policy and legal requirements that are attached to these projects. One way to think of it is if our first year was about the bill passing and the second year was about the programs launching, this is about the money moving so we can get the dirt flying. That's really what we're focused on in this third and fourth year. And we are working to strike the right balance between making sure the process is rigorous enough and has the right kind of oversight. Uh, including our direct oversight, oversight from our uh, inspector general, and of course oversight from Congress. And at the same time, not adding so many conditions and complications to the process that it slows us down. It's not unusual for it to take a year just from an award announcement to a grant agreement. And that's just one step in getting a project done. We want to compress that timeline without leaving out any important steps. I think we're off to a good start. I've been pleased to see the way project sponsors have rallied to be ready for the dollars coming their way. But we're also putting dedicated staff time and attention to how to work with those project sponsors, identify issues as they come, come up, provide technical assistance for navigating our own processes, and make those processes simpler in the first place. I appreciate the, um, uh, particularly the acknowledgement of having to get the program stood up and also uh, that we need to get these projects uh, moving as quickly as possible and, and that we've, we've now entered into that phase of um, efficiently and effectively getting the, the disbursement of funds. Um, the last thing I wanted to touch on uh, before you leave in my last uh, few seconds here is an issue that I know I've brought up um, uh, personally with you before. Uh, and it relates to the bipartisan infrastructure law allocating a billion dollars for the maintenance, acquisition, and installation of aviation navi 
aviation navigation aids. I'm used to just saying nav aids. Um, at, for small and medium-sized airports that depend on these technologies for managing air traffic. And, you know, these nav aids are operating. There are plenty of them that are operating well beyond their expected useful life. And parts are becoming difficult uh, to source. And uh, these, these systems need to be updated across the country. And I just, I'm, I'm flagging it because I would... Uh, I would love for us to continue uh, to to look at this and make sure that we're uh, you know committed to to keeping our airspace the safest airspace in, in the world and uh, and you know any new FAA leadership uh, once that process uh, runs through would love to make sure that uh, our offices are working together on getting these nav aids up, upgraded and updated. Thanks. And Thanks. So we welcome working with your office on that. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Davids. Mr. Secretary, the chair now rec rec 